Everybody, it's Ben Ash from Sam Ash Music, and this is not Deja Vu. We actually have another Yamaha live stream today. Yesterday we did the Yamaha Pacifica guitars. Today we are about to talk about the Yamaha YC88 and the YC73. Some awesome organs. We'll explain why they're organs and not to be confused with other types of keyboards. But let me introduce the man who was just playing that wonderful little tune, who's also the Yamaha Note Award winner, Blake <laughs> Angelos. The what Yamaha is going Note on? Award hey, how's it going, man? Um, I am, I, 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 you know, once you've won the Note Award... Everything changes. <laughs> I, everything changes. The I whole mean, world changes. I've seen I, all the paparazzi photos. You're always right on here. TMZ. <laughs> Ariana Grande is jealous you're stealing the spotlight. So Well, you know... But we all know um, behind the scenes you guys are friends, so it's all good. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're tight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> jokes aside, jokes aside, uh, this is great. We've, uh, we should let everyone know, Blake's been on the quote-unquote show before, so we've got yep. uh, a lot to re um, review because we've already talked about the YC61, uh, but now we have the YC73 and 88. And you're like, oh, that just probably means there's more keys. But... Blake is going to dispel some, uh, maybe some myths and theories that people think are the case with these new keyboards, which are or are not the case. But let's go into it. So first of all, what do we got here? It's the YC88. Well, yeah, here, let me give you the uh, the overhead shot here so you can sort of see the lay of the line. Now, this is the YC88 right here. So basically, um, we had the Believe in Music um, event that just happened uh, back just last month. And we released two new uh, members of the YC family, of the YC series is what we call this. The YC73 and the YC88 that you see here. So basically, um, we or originally released the YC61, and we've already done a, uh, uh, a hang. You and me did one here on the YC61. So that's an organ-focused stage keyboard. It's 61 notes, and it has a waterfall-style action. So that instrument is definitely for the, the organist. Because of that waterfall action, it allows you to do a lot of organ-type techniques, glissandos and palms and slides and stuff like that. It's very lightweight, but it's very organ focused. A lot of our customers, when we released that product, immediately wanted to know if we would release weighted action versions of the YC series, and that's what we did. So we have the YC73. That's a 73-note balanced hammer action. The advantage of that instrument is that it's a, it's a, it's a weighted action but it's very lightweight. The action design itself is designed to be lightweight. It's less than 30 pounds. It's about 29 point something pounds. So 73 n weighted action um, keyboard at about 30 pounds is really nice. So it's for keyboardists is what we like to um, think about that one for, the, the yeah, type of player for that. Because I'm sure if, because uh, everyone wants to know 
how you compare it to not only just Yamaha keyboards in general, but also the competition. And I would assume that this is arguably one of the lighter keyboards of this kind of type as compared to yeah. others. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, and side note, I should mention, if you're not already wearing headphones or using uh, <laughs> nice. studio monitors, I highly recommend you do it for this live stream because this live stream is in stereo and listening to this keyboard in stereo is something else. It is fantastic. So highly recommend, put on those headphones, turn it on, preferably your Yamaha monitors, and you'll, you'll have a blast. This is going to sound, I mean, if you hadn't already heard the beginning, you'll be able to hear when it's in replay mode. But it's going to be a fun live stream to hear this time around. So, and also I should mention off the top, why not? If you're interested, say we've already convinced you just with the little we've talked about this keyboard. These are available in in-stock at SamAsh.com and you can inquire about them at your local SamAsh store, whether it's you want the YC88 or 73. But if you're still not convinced, we're going to make sure to convince you by the end of this show. So, let's keep talking about it. So. Yeah, so... So you, you, you have an interesting, um, you know, what makes this different? Well, I'll, I'll say a couple of things, just two things off the top of my head that make these keyboards different. Um, so you were, the, the weight on the YC73 being uh, 30 pounds but still weighted action, I think there's a lot of manufacturing things that we bring to the table when we make um, keyboards. Um, and part of that is durability. So all of the YC instruments are... Um, uh, Aluminum alloy, so they're very strong. They feel very but still solid, light. but still very light. Yeah, we have a lot of metallurgy um, capabilities at Yamaha. If you think about what we do, I mean, you know, we make uh, part of our company, or at least another part of our company, makes motorcycles. So there's they they want lighter weight metal in motorcycles, and I know that we use some of that technology. We bring that over to our uh, musical instruments. So things like the chassis of this keyboard being an aluminum alloy that, that they, 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 generally, they take a while to figure out what they want to use for these things to get the lightweight and the durability. Um, yeah, and that's funny, a cool thing. When we were talking with Andy yesterday, we were talking about how uh, they worked with the motorcycle division yeah. or the motor division i should say to make the trapeze bridges bridges on the rev stars so i didn't oh, wow. realize it went across i didn't know the board that of, yeah so the Big motorcycle company. division <laughs> does work not only with the guitars apparently but also with the keyboard so it's very cool uh side note just have some comments coming up so this was at the beginning this is matt blackstock saying wow sounds good and i love yamaha keyboards and yeah, I complimented saw you specifically thank you matt so, thanks a lot matt I appreciate that, man. Definitely. Thanks for coming in and listening. And you're wearing headphones. Good. Yes. So, it, again, wear the headphones, man, because uh, this is going to yeah. be great. Um, but, yeah, so we've got – so this is how – so we've discussed how it compares to the YC61, but I'm sure there are people who are also wondering, how does it compare to something like the CP series with the 73 and 88? Again, That's totally a great different question. beast. Um, well, they 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 are related in the fact that they're they're stage keyboards. One of them is stage piano, and the other one is a stage keyboard. This is the stage keyboard. The YC series are stage keyboards. The YC or the the CP is a stage piano, and right there gives you an idea of what that w what we're going for here. The There's a thing called Blake's Take. If you go right to the main homepage of YamahaSynth.com, right at the very top, the very top article where it says read more, where it says introducing the YC73 and 88, is my article. And I actually have a picture of both the CP in there and the YC specifically to, um, to talk about that exact point. The CP is stage or is piano focused. It has a dedicated acoustic piano section and it has a dedicated electric piano section. And each of those sections are things that are specific to acoustic pianos and things that are specific to electric pianos, especially when it comes to effects. In the electric piano section of the CP, the effects that you have in there are very electric piano focused effects. Phasers, flangers, um, there's a compressor in there. There's there's a ring modulator. You know, a lot of guys in the 70s used ring modulators on their electric piano, so that's in there. The wah-wah effect, that's in there. Um, but again, the whole point of it is focused on pianos and electric pianos, and then there's a subcategory section, which is subservient, subordinate to the pianos. So very, very piano-focused. When it comes to the YC series, this is more of a versatile keyboard. And the reason why is because, well, you have... 
this organ section right here. So it's definitely organ focused, but the organ section and the keys section and the effects section, there's three different technologies that we use to make sound in this instrument. One of them is AWM2. That's our sample based technology that we have in the CP. And in fact, the CP is all AWM2. All the sounds generated from the CP is using um, uh, the AWM2 sample based um, technology. But we also have VCM, VCM virtual circuitry modeling for the vintage drawbar organs and for the rotary speaker effect. Um, so VCM is both a tone generation technology and an effect processing technology. Um, and then we have FM. FM we use in the organs. There's three different F series organs, F1, F2, F3, which I'll talk about in a second, in here using FM synthesis. But also in the key section of this instrument, there's also FM synthesis for things like synth pads, synth leads, and of course the great DX style electric piano that uh, was huge in the 80s and now is coming back pretty big. So the difference is really Everything in old the focus. Is new again. Yeah. In fact, I have a friend of mine that's a jazz pianist in uh, Seattle that has a CP88, that loves his CP88, and asked me specifically about the YC, and, and I, I told him kind of the difference. There's another difference about the CP is the, the CP is going to have a little bit more going on with pianos. There's the Bosendorfer Imperial Grand that is not in the YC. It's in the CP, though. So if you like that Bosendorfer sound, you get that in the CP because of the piano-focused nature of it. You still get CFX in here, which I love this piano, C7, but just not all of the, of the acoustic pianos that you get in the CP. Um, but when I talked to my friend in Seattle about this, he, he said, um, well, actually, that makes sense to me. I would rather have something that's a little bit more piano focused that uh, doesn't have as many things going on to take me away from being what he does, which is a pianist. But if I'm playing a gig, I'd rather probably have a YC if this was the only keyboard I had because all the sounds that you need for the gig are in this instrument. Synth leads, FM sounds, organs, boom, all in one keyboard. That's pretty S slick. Yeah, so I, I, that's, I mean, a lot of information to gather. Um, and it's great that you were as thorough as you were, but for those that want to break down, Blake was kind enough, and you can find this both on our YouTube page and on our Instagram page. Uh, he did a video about the CP series. So if you want to learn more about the CP73 yeah. or 88, go to either YouTube and search for Sam Ash Music and search for that video in particular. You can also see it on our IGTV as well. And uh, a lot, and he also, I believe you also did one for the uh, Mod X or Modi X, excuse mm -hmm. me. So th we have that video as well, both on, and we're gonna get into how it compares to the Modi X and the montage yes. in a moment. But uh, with the technologies you were mentioning, because everybody loves to hear what it sounds like, I personally would love to hear it. And the biggest takeaway I got, and a bit of a joke, is because it's so different from the uh, CP series, it sounds like if you're a keyboard player who wants some great sounds and you can't decide between um, the YC and the CP, I recommend you get both. They do well, totally different things, but they are both great and we carry both of them. So it does not hurt, yeah. at least for me, if you guys wanted to get both keyboards. Well, the YC61 as a top keyboard with the CP as a bottom keyboard, that's a great, that's a great setup right there. There you go. I didn't know. Um, and you happen to be a salesman, right, of these keyboards, right? That's your gig, right? <laughs> me? I, well, in, in so far as that uh, through, through the marketing world, yes. One I, might say I, you're I, a you know. Yamaha influencer, if you will. I, yes, I'm kind of a Yamaha influencer. But yeah, I'm going to shut evangelist. up. Product evangelist. There you go. I like that. So uh, I'm going to shut up, and you're going to play, uh, expl explain the sounds and how you get sure. those sounds from the tech you just described. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I'm playing the 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 YC88 here. This has that triple sensor that I was talking about, so I can restrike the note before it comes off the bottom of the key top. So it f this action is amazing. It's one of the great things about both the YC88 and the CP88. But here's what I love about the the YC. This is this my first sound here, Blake CFX. Now I have in the front panel here. I have some key sections right here that I can turn on and turn off and bring them in and out. And you can do some neat stuff with this, um, with starting as the piano. And I'll bring in the organ. Uh, I'm going to talk about the organs later, but um, for the first part of this, I just want to uh, put the organ in sort of a secondary role, almost a backing pad role. Um, that's one thing I really love about this instrument is that I, I, I do different th things playing the organ. And so the CFX sound, so I have this great...
So this I, this is my favorite piano probably for gigs. This is our big CFX concert grand, and it has this nice, um, basically the, the main tone that you play, that tends to pop out a little bit more with a with a uh, with the CFX. So it's not as resonant. It's a very present piano, but it's also very very expressive. It's also hard to talk and play at the same time. But check this out. Now I can turn on a pad just like this really fast. And I also have this set so that I can bring in the pad if I want to. Um, using, oh, I have it with the organ, sorry, different sound. Now if I want to bring in the organ here, I switch on the organ section and now I have... just the organ in here, I can control that with my foot pedal so I can bring it in as I want to. I can turn on. Oh, that's cool. So I just switched sounds here. Why I like to point this out is because this also has seamless sound switching. When I move between live that sets. Was, what? What's that? No, I'm just like that. <laughs> it's cool. Like you have to understand, <laughs> I'm not a keyboard player. I, I always say that and it's no surprise to anybody. But as a guitar player, what's interesting is we always deal with uh, the idea of tap dancing when you have a pedal board, where if you want to put pedals in and out, it's like you got to move and some people have it set to like MIDI yeah. switching and whatnot, whatever. It, I could go on for days, but this is a keyboard thing. So we're going to focus on that. But what I love about this keyboard, and I think we brought this up with the 61 at one point, it to the layman, it might be daunting to see all those knobs and buttons and faders on that keyboard. But with a closer inspection, you realize, first of all, the layout is much simpler to use and much yeah. easier to follow. It's like, I'm not a keyboard player and even I could figure out how this works. And, but that thing you did where you, first of all, the foot pedal thing, I didn't even know was a thing and that's amazing. But the fact that you're able to seamlessly bring in and out sounds with literally the flip of a switch. And, and that's a huge deal. If you're yeah. a keyboard player, you don't want to take your hands off the keys to have to do anything. Usually you, again, you have to set it to a click track where it switches everything. And then, but sometimes you don't know the tempo might change if you're not going to a click track or you aren't feeling a certain sound. But in this case, the fact that you're able to literally put it in with a switch and the fact, like you said, it changes the sound, not really hard and drastic, but very smooth where the sound mm -hmm. can fade out while you're bringing in a new sound in. Right. Yep. And that's, I mean, yeah, that's musical. Awesome. And it doesn't, and, and um, you know, you said a few things here. Like, yeah, there's a lot of buttons on here, but the one thing I love about this, it's a one-to-one -one interface. Each button does one thing. You don't have to do a lot of menu diving on the gig to get the sound that you want. You can just move things around. Now, there, there's certainly a menu here, and there are some things that you can get into a little deeper on here, but the main things that are in front of me here are what I'm gonna use on the gig. I'm not gonna jump in the menu, but I will be, you know, I may want to be able to just bring in a pad sound and adjust the volume of that pad sound very quickly, and then realize that I maybe wanna have a little bit more delay on my pad, so I have a digital delay here for one of my effects. I want to add a little bit more of that. I want to turn on the organ section here. Or if I'm starting a tune again, that's one thing. Now I just move to another sound. Totally new sound there. Not to by mention, moving one sounds, to another. Really the sounds fast. Are great. Yeah, fast to to 
edit sounds, to change sounds, to do things I want, to engage in effect, to turn it on and off, all that right in front of you. Really simple, simple interface. That's and speaking of awesome interface, part. it works as an interface. Yep. So you can either use this as plug into a speaker, play live, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, so something, the, the tune that I played at the beginning, I should mention this, all the sounds except for the bass and the drums. There are no bass and drums in this instrument. Right. But um, the bass and drums I, I used in Cubase. I used some virtual instruments just for those two. But the other parts, there was a horn section in there. Um, with the horns, I had a flute in there. I had a guitar in there. Um, what else did I have? I had some like a pads and stuff like that in that in that backing. Those were all from this instrument. Those sounds are in here. There's some great uh, horn sections. In fact, I have them right here. You know, really fast to bring those suckers up. Where'd I put them? Right here. You know. Done. I mean, so there's horn sections in here. There's guitars in here. You know, it's... If Andy's watching, he's going to lose his gig. Andy's watching. It must be weird that you don't have a note award, Andy. <laughs> 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 no, I love Andy. Hey, come on. No, Andy's the best. I'll vote for him next time. But check this out. I love this one because I can use this song. I call this Spanish Steel. So I use this cool uh, sine wave lead in here. Ooh. It's got a cat. What a cool vibe. pad in here. But with the organ, this is an F1 organ. So this is one of the FM organs. So I'm pulling these up as live sets, you know, things that just come to me when I'm playing, when I'm um, writing a tune, um, especially at home right now, since we're all at home doing this. I love having these things right in front of me that I can turn on and, and get ready uh, or, or and, and just line out sounds and stuff so that I can, you know, go to the production, um, you know, and, 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 and use these great sounds in here. Um, that aren't just piano and aren't just organ. There's lots of stuff in this instrument. It's really cool, but it's fast. That's what I love about it, is yeah, that it doesn't I, I get mean, in the way of a creative thing. In a world so where we're fast-paced we have... too. So. Oh yeah, well, in a world where we're fast-paced and short attention spans, you gotta do things quick. No, heck, it, okay. at a gig, they don't have time to wait for you to do sounds like that. Let me, let me, I wanna address something. There's a guy right here, Michael Dennis. Uh, that he makes a point here, and I and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you. Ooh. Okay. Now the reason why is because he says that if you listen closely, there's somewhat harsh treble sounding piano. Okay. So I can immediately adjust that back. The tone control on here. Oh man. And that's one of the pianos. That's the CFX in here. Um, but the S700 actually, if I bring the tone down on that one. So I, I'm going to have to disagree with you, you know, honestly. And uh, other yeah, pianos last I, I played. Um, I, was, I was about to say, last I checked, I don't think there's a treble knob on any Steinway pianos. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, 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 we have love for Steinway, too. Of but course. we are talking it's about great, Yamaha. And this I thing have love sounds for pianos. Yeah, I exactly. love pianos, no question. But I, I will guarantee you that I can get the sound that I'm looking for using this instrument, um, using the tone controls, the EQ controls, and this compressor. You notice I use the compressor on a lot of the sounds in here for the piano because it evens out the sound a little bit, especially for live performance. I do like right. how this compressor sounds and works. It's not, you know, it's, it's on, you know, like when I turn it off, it's also bringing... But what's so interesting... I, I have it bringing a little bit more level but you notice you don't really hear it happening. In it. it just is 
it, it's doing what it what I want it to do. It's improving the sound, it bringing it up a little bit more in the mix, but I'm not hearing it working. And That's I also what, you know, think what I love about it's the same thing with guitars is that when you use certain effects like compression, it does affect the way that you physically play the instrument. You feel different. Like I play different clean than I do distortion. And I feel like with this keyboard, with the already great, and granted, I'm not putting my hands on the keyboard at the moment, but you have great action. And I'm sure that you can respond to the keyboard more accurately and more authentically when you play around with these effects. And it's not like, for example, if you have a non-weighted keyboard, everything feels the same. It's hard to play differently with a non-weighted keyboard, but with it weighted and the action that you say and boast about, which is true about these keyboards, is so when you have something like compression, you tend to play a little bit more delicately, right? but it responds much better when you play these kind of keyboards. Right. And I think it's yeah. a very good testament, first of all, the sound quality. Again, I'm wearing these headphones and it sounds killer. Um, and so it's just a testament to this keyboard that between Blake's fantastic playing and the sounds and the customizability, if that, if I'm, or customization, I should say, yeah. of these keyboards, you really get a lot out of it. So I'm sure people might be threatened by the price and we'll get to that whole thing in a minute, but um, I think it's worth it's everything because like if it was a $10,000 keyboard, it'd probably still be worth it because it's it's a lot of keyboard and one thing i have to address forgive me if i skip over a few things i'm more than happy to go back to a few things is i think what makes this a great keyboard is not only that it is great for its price and that we have a financing plan but again we'll get into that um but it really has all this op these options to customize the sound library and i believe it's updatable so it won't be an obsolete keyboard because a lot of people are afraid if they invest in a keyboard that, okay, I better plan on getting one again in five years. But this is the kind of keyboard you can get and probably last you a lifetime. I mean, there are people still using Yamaha keyboards from the 70s and the 80s because they love the sounds and how it still works in today's world of music. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I love about as far as today's world of music is this Nashville C3 that we just added, this will give me an opportunity to talk about, we have OS updates that are semi-regular. About every six to eight months, we'll have an OS update that will add new sounds and new features to this instrument. Um, one of the, we just released the brand new one, which is, uh, what is it? Um, 1.2 or 1.1? You I can, can make up a right number here. for all I know. <laughs> it's 1.1, I believe. I just don't want, it's 1.1, I'm just a... Uh, Anyway, so with 1.1, we added this new one that's called the Nashville C3. Um, another thing that, that this gentleman brought up in here is that about samples of acoustic pianos, that these are samples. Definitely they are. But how we sample is different between different types of instruments. Um, in fact, I, I, I know that we do things sometimes where they sample a sound from the player position. They sample from a little bit further away to give a little bit more room. Um, and in this case of the Nashville C3 here, this is actually a C3 that has a very, um, it is, it is a, um, a character rich. That'd be the best way I could put it. It's a it played in piano. It means that it's been in a recording studio and it's been sitting in there and it's uh So this is a C3, this is a smaller piano. It's not a big nine foot concert ground, but it has a very specific sound to it. So it it's definitely has a different sound, a more present sound, a very country, a pop kind of sound. This instrument, how we sample this one is different. We used actually a tape emulation system. It actually was record, used, used analog tape to record the instrument and to make this sample. It was processed this way. So it's a very different kind of way that how it sounds. It sounds different in the headphones. It sounds different in the stereo field. Um, and I love this one for doing stuff like what I'm about to do here. I have my organ in here and I also have this cool guitar that's a uh, uh, guitar running through an amp simulator, so electric guitar. But this is great for like... <laughs> Make sure it was made. 
So I have a foot switch for my for my um, down here for my rotary speaker. I can assign that so I don't have to touch it. I can keep my hands on here. And I'm using the the volume pedal only is only controlling the organ over here so I can bring it in. It's great for like an intro of a tune. But then if you add this clean guitar sound running through distortion two and an analog delay. So I have two different separate effects for keys A and keys B. You can see them changing here. Oh, keys cool. A has damper pedal resonance and compressor. I put the compressor on the piano as well. So I have this very pop sound. And then B has a distortion effect. This one happens to be um, the British lead is what this one. It has kind of a, you'll hear it in a second, but, and then I have an analog style delay, like a tape delay in here. So now check this out. It sounds like you could be it sounds like you could be in a Jackson Brown tribute band and it right. would just be a singer and you. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly right. Um, you know, uh, so the foot pedals that I have down here, by the way, just so you know, I have um, two FC pedals down here. One of them is for volume and the other one I have for assignable things. So one thing that I can assign my FC in here for is, uh, it's the next page, isn't it? Where did I put it? Um is for pedal wah. So I have my clav sound here. So one pedal here, that was the wrong, here's the, so that's for the volume pedal, right? The other one. Wow. 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 You switched between that real quick. Like usually when someone wants to show like I'm saying the foot pedal. Oh, that, it's like setting it up was instantaneous because I saved it in a live set. So I've already saved this. So, you know, you do your your saving inside of a live set before you uh, pull it up and then when it and then everything's assigned. But check That's this great. out just just to let you know how easy this instrument is. Let's say that what I want to do rather than use the pedal clav here, um, I will, uh, I'll assign it to this effect here. And we'll assign it to, this is a compressor, or rather a chorus effect. Right, chorus effect. So I've assigned chorus effect now to this sound. And what I wanna do is I wanna control the depth of the chorus effect using my foot controller pedal. How do I do that? It's just a matter of going into, there is a settings in here. It is, this is one, a quick little menu thing, but it's really fast to go over and assign that. Right now you see it's set to pedal. In fact, what am I doing? I have a what nice close up for this. Let's there go you back go, here. look at that. So what I did here was, and I can even put my face in here too, so we can talk and you can look and yeah. Check this well, out. It's, so, it's your money maker, man. So this you is gotta the do the, that. The, this is the clav, and this is a, this camera is not as fast here, but it doesn't matter because you can see right here. Clav, I'm going to go into my settings here. I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to drop down into controllers right here, and then I'm going to go to foot controller two, and then you see where it says assign. So right now it's set to the pedal wall, right? Well, I want to set it to this. How do I do it? You literally go to this foot assign, and you just move whatever you want to assign it to. Now it's assigned. So right now I did it to drive or I can set it to, I wanted it to this depth here, right? So now watch that. Let me move back over to my overhead shot here. You'll see this depth here now move because Whoa. I just assigned it to that. That's so awesome. Now if I want to go back to my pedal wall effect, well I just go back here to settings and go back to my, my shot here. Controllers, foot controller to assign and then you know, I can just go to four, that's what it's at, or I can just move the thing here, but four is what is set up for the pedal wah effect in here. So now it's back to pedal wah. But it's just that, I mean, any button or knob on here can be assigned to a pedal or 
a controller. It could be over where I have my, my pitch pin and modulation stuff that's over here. You can't really see it because it's kind of off to the side here. But, um, you know, very easy to get around and assign things to do what you want it to do, especially great when you're playing live. This is really a, an important thing. So. so while we're at the little more than halfway point, I do want to let everyone know if you're tuned in. I'm going to just do this so people can see me a little bit. Please ask us any and all questions. I know it's just Blake and I talking and sharing Ooh. knowledge about keyboards, but if you don't understand something that was said or you need further explanation on something that was said or you just have, again, comparison questions. How does this compare to the competitor? How does this compare to something else in the Yamaha line? Does it have a feature that you're hoping for? By all means, ask us these questions. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, and we're on Twitch. So use that comment section, add, say something, let us know, and we'll be hope. I mean, we even addressed someone who was so s sweared that the Steinway is this and the Yama, and Blake was like, I'll address it, ain't uh, no yeah, problem. I Great pianos are great pianos. Let's be clear. Right. I love all pianos because they're amazing, and it's a beautiful thing. So I got nothing bad to say about any, any yeah. manufacturer about it. But I will say this. Yamaha takes a lot of time studying pianos. The CFX is a perfect example of that. They took something like 18 years where they made prototype after prototype, they put the instrument in front of classical pianists all over the world and asked them specifically what they wanted from a piano. And that's Perfect. what happened when they designed the CFX. And the CFX is actually chosen time and time again over a lot of other pianos because of, of, of its sound and the things that it brings to the table. And I won't get deeply into that, but it's, it's uh, you know, it, the main thing is that this company is very, very passionate about making instruments that sound good and play good and make people and empower people to play music and love Perfect. music and that's it that's, that's basically it. exactly what andy said it but on obviously yeah. about guitars you want to make instruments that people are looking for nothing nothing totally crazy you just want to make it that they need it it's got every feature they need simplified and it will play great and sound great at a great price yeah um, I should also mention, speaking of, because hopefully we've convinced some of you at this point, Sam Ash Music's got it in stock online, and if you if you want, some of our stores, I believe, have it on display, and if it's not, it's only because so many people loved it, they bought it, and it's not in stock, but again, if, say, that we only have the YC73 instead of the YC88, or vice versa, they're arguably the same exact keyboard, just with less or more keys, depending on which one you're playing, so... Highly recommend you try it out because some of you might be like, ah, it's a little biased for Sam Ash and Yamaha to say that these keyboards are great and it plays like this and the feature sets are this. All right, prove us wrong. Come into a store. We, by the way, are making sure that our stores are completely safe and sanitary. I'll go over that at the end. But come on in if you feel up to it. Play these keyboards. They're great. I mean, I'm speaking on behalf of just our friends at Yamaha and I trust their judgment, but... If you want to play a great keyboard, come on in, play around with it, uh, take what Blake has advised and try the settings, try the setups, try all the little features and see for yourself. Well, you know, that, that it, it, it's, his, it, it's important to, to play these instruments, definitely. Um, it's important to listen to them in stereo, too. It's a big deal at Yamaha. We also make a lot of... Uh, you know, high-end mixing consoles and speakers and all sorts of things. So making sure that you, um, hopefully you didn't hear that. <laughs> was, was that my email? <laughs> if you heard oh, that. Oh, it might have been mine. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you used Outlook. <laughs> I, I left I left it because I had, <laughs> hey, just in case look, that happens again. Some of us are still um, on the clock. It's totally understood. Anyway. <laughs> um, but listening to things in stereo um, I also, when I play gigs, I absolutely run in stereo. Um, even if I'm playing in a in a in a gig where the the front of house may not be in stereo, because sometimes that doesn't happen, I'm in stereo because I always bring a, two speakers, two DXR tens, and a small sub mixer, and I send that out to the to the to the the board. I should um, mention we also have. But all I like those to hear myself in stereo. 
Yeah, What's we that? have. I said we have those speakers and that mixer at Sam Ash as well. Yep. We are a proud carrier Absolutely. of Yamaha products. So basically, if any Yamaha product has been mentioned in this or really any live stream, just assume Sam Ash Music has it. The only reason we wouldn't ha would be it's discontinued. That'd be the only reason. And even yep. still, we might even have it in our used section. So if you're looking for a used Yamaha gear, we can get that probably. But I digress. We've got this great keyboard and you should try it out because but, even I'm know, tempted and I'm a guitar exactly. player. And, you know, and once you try things out and, you know, realize that, that the sound that you're going for on a lot of these instruments, um, the tools are usually in these instruments. So if you play a preset, let's say, and you're like, oh, that's okay, but I wish it had this and this, we give you a lot of the tools to, to, to um, allow you to, to shape the sound a bit. Um, one thing that I've been talking to people about is has to do with the organs. Um, now, I just pulled up some of the organ sounds here, and so you notice right away if you hear that, that's rotary speaker noise. Now, a lot of people oh. don't want that in there so much. I like to bring it up a bit because it adds to the authenticity. The, the sound of a, of a real rotary speaker, it, it makes a sound because it is moving air. So we've simulated that sound inside here. Now, let me go to my... My, uh, well, that's perfect if you're trying to record shot a record. And if I go, so I have this. So it's down a little bit now because I turned it down a bit. But check it out. I go into sound. I'm going to go into organ settings. Oops, sorry. Rotary speaker settings, I mean. Background noise, level. So 79 is quite a lot. I mean, I could make it a lot louder. Or I can bring it entirely out if I want to. But I like it, you know, right around that 70-something, 90 maybe. This is a dual manual, so I have upper here, lower manual split here. There's so I can comp here. You know, so you can play that kind of stuff. I just moved everything here when I did that. But, um... Another thing that you can do inside the rotary speaker is adjust the balance between the horn and the level and the and the rotor. This is a big a big thing to get a, a, a little bit more of a darker sound or a brighter sound depending on what you want to do here. So horn level that would be the top, right? That's the that's the top part that spins. That's like a horn, and then the rotor is the bottom speaker that is more like a like a woofer. So in mine, I have mine set at 112. So I have a little bit more rotor, usually in the sound that I like, a little bit less horn, because I want a little bit of that lower sound of the instrument. And then I can adjust it over, over and I'll show this in the wide shot, with the tone and drive on the rotary speaker effect in here too. But check this out. So what if I turn the, the horn all the way? Way more high end, way more high end. Yeah, good luck doing that with a real Leslie. What's that? I said, good luck doing that with a real Leslie. Well, you know, you'd probably have to have, have like, a, a, a screwdriver. Or yeah. A, I don't know. <laughs> but check it out. Here's, here's, here's rotor here. So I just rolled that way out. Now it's all horn. But I hear a lot of people saying that, you know, I, I feel like I want a little bit more low. Uh, a few people... Uh, said that, asked me that on Yamaha synth, and I show them this, and yeah, that's that, that's cool. Plus, you have things like you can set it to stereo or mono. In this case, I set the output to mono. I kind of wanted that sound for just the organ in here. I can make it a stereo output as well. But uh, again, you you have some control to shape the sound, but it's not super deep. Nothing I'm in here is getting way deep. It's just I'm just you know looking at one part of here um, that I can. You know, I can adjust those things. Same thing with organ settings. I can drop into the organ settings in here and adjust things like leakage. The that turn it down. There's like no leakage, so you don't hear all the harmonics that happen when when uh, different components in a drawbar organ leak into one another. It adds this kind of hear that. It's in there. That's a lot of leakage. And this is the H1 organ. H2 organ. 
whole point about this really is that there are lots of things in this instrument for you to customize the sound. Be it a piano, if you want a darker sounding piano, you want um, a little bit, you know, you know, like I say, darker sounding piano. You want a little bit more of a uh, lower, uh, uh, drivey sort of organ tone, you, where you want a little bit more of the rotary speaker effect in here. And by the way, I want to go to my open, open shot here so you can see this. Over here is where I can I can further adjust that organ sound. So let me go back to my original organ sound here. Um, that's just this one right here. So that had a little bit like the 60 and, I don't know, 90 for organ and rotor. But I can adjust the tone here too. So I can roll back the horn sound, increase more of the or rather roll back the rotor sound, increase a little bit more of the horn sound, and then own back a little bit more high frequency with this tone, but still have that same balance between the two. That's my point, is that there's a lot of places in this instrument for you to do those type of edits and to customize your sound how you want it. So that- It's pretty cool. So to sum up basically what he's saying, which is fantastic, is the simple fact that you have a keyboard that if you know nothing like me about keyboards or almost next to nothing about keyboards, it still works. But yeah. if you're one of those very nuanced people, look, we have it in the guitar community when it comes to tone, but with keyboard, some people like you just, ex you just demonstrated about, you want that horn or you want the air you want, because not only is it different for live performance, but even just recording, you don't want to have to do any of this stuff in post if you can avoid it. If you can get that sound right away, great. And that's another thing is we were, we glanced on the fact that this is an interface, but technically, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it's also a MIDI keyboard. So you have the mm -hmm. option of either using the sounds, which it'd be hard pressed to find anything better out of this than what's in this keyboard. So you have you want organ and you want specific air and you want specific horn type quality, plug in right into your interface or use this and you have those sounds. Say you have you have your own specific plugins that you swear by, or correct me if I'm wrong again, can you combine what plugins you have as well as the sounds, not necessarily putting the plugins onto the keyboard, but you have an output of the keyboard doing its own sounds and simultaneously triggering MIDI in a DAW? Is that possible? Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's Basically, um, here, let me get into my, um, you can see my panel here. So if you go over here to, well, first of all, a few things in here. Um, one of them where you have, uh, this is USB audio volume coming into the instrument. When you... Oh. I think we lost Blake. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, not sure what happened there. Oh, wait, there he is. Hold on. Oh, did it just kind of twig out for a second? You just disappeared. We all missed oh. you. We were, we've been Ooh. writing no letters. We've already put out an, uh, a search warrant. We're trying to make sure we found you, but we're glad you just dipped out for I'm a here. second. Yay. Internet. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, you can see this right here. I don't know. I have a different view in the, well, whatever you're seeing, I think you can see this. Yeah, we this see is it just great. adjust the the USB audio volume coming in. So this would be from a, uh, a virtual instrument or from a backing track, for example. So you can control that and set that up inside the instrument. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is I'm going to drop in here to where it says Master Keyboard Controller, and I have I'm going to turn on a zone switch, and I have the ability to go to an individual zone here and via MIDI, transmit on different MIDI channels, zone on, octave, what octave I'm in, what transpose setting I'm in. I use this all the time, especially when I'm maybe, for example, I'm playing a drum kit, right? And I wanna play on the keyboard, I want the kick drum, which is two octaves down here, to appear at middle C. I can just go over to the octave switch and adjust that by two, so now it just moves whatever that virtual instrument is or whatever Perfect. external device is that way. But you have all of this stuff in here for a four zone MIDI controller, controller per live set. So as I change live sets, this can all be completely different. Right. It calls up note limit high, note limit low, bank MSB, LSB, program change, volume, all of these things right here. You can assign that to send out via MIDI per zone. So it's a so really slick. 
In fact, one of our artists I talked to the other day was talking about how much he loves his CP88 as a controller. He just loves that feature in it. It is. You mean YC88 or CP88? On, uh, he has a CP88. This is the same in the CP88. This part. Okay, I just wanted YC88. to be clear for those yeah, listening. Sorry, but it is. It's the same feature set in this piece of the instrument. This controller part of it. Same on each one. Here's something that's different, though. I have this. Uh, so here's your your classic. FM piano, true FM right here. Check this out. I don't have to get deep into FM, but I do want a few FM things that are kind of cool. So we have some interesting things that you can do with FM in here. One of them is FM unison. What FM unison does, you'll hear it in a second. Nice sounding, right? FM yeah. unison will double the uh, the FM sound and give you this kind of cool. Hear it chorus out a little bit more. There's yeah, four me Doogie Howser vibes. That's cool. Now check this out. So I have FM Unison. I can detune the oh. the four different components in here now too. Oh. It's a lot. There's no effects going on. This is only FM. I still have chorus effect if I want it, but right now all we have is that. So let's do a detune of six and then spread. Spread gives it a little bit more wideness in the field. Oh, and that's where the stereo comes in. Cool, huh? I mean, very so that's, cool. Now check this out. If I go into another live set sound here, which is right next to it, I have this lead sound. <laughs> FM lead. This has mono mode as well. Again, the versatility of the YC is kind of shining through here over the piano focus. You can't really do this on a CP. On a YC, you can. You have things like mono, phonic, lead, FM. So same thing with this one. I can go in here to my sound, go into key A settings, FM unison, do the same thing here. I also have finger pornamento on there too. Cool. So now two FM lead sounds. And with an organ. Or whatever, you know, just turn on a switch. But you know what's so, funny? Very I cool that you can do this. Yeah, I was about to say, had you told me that feature, I'd say to you, if I was a customer, I'd be like, that's very cool. I'll probably never use it because it seems way too difficult to set up. But you just went over that in not even five it's minutes. It's easy. It's, it's super easy. It's and super it's easy. Worth, and worth you know, doing because I, it's hard to get those kind of sounds to dial in with other yeah. keyboards, even in plugins, you're like, oh, which knob will do that? And then you're spending a half hour just to try and get that sound. And you right. guys are like, oh, we got you covered. Just go here, go there, and you're done in two minutes. And you have exactly the type of Dookie Hauser-esque or 80s uh, ballad type right. key sound you want. Well, you know, we wanted to give you some things that you can change that give you, um, so, you know, a little bit, a little bit of depth, just a little bit. If you want deep, though, we have a montage. If you really want to go seriously into FM programming where you want to adjust individual operators, boy, we, we, we can take you there with something like a montage or a Modi X. Those are deeper instruments. They're synthesizers, right? The YC mm -hmm. being versatile is kind of this, this area between deep. Versatile is sort of in here where it's not super deep. You don't have to get lost in in programming, but we give you some control over it. And then you have the focus things, the things that are like, I really don't want to get deep at all. I really want to have my pianos, my electric pianos. So we have d d different different types of instruments for different types of musicians. That's what it's about. Perfect. Um, we're basically towards the end of the show, so I just want to make sure we've covered everything. So yeah, it's, it's definitely an instrument here. I'll even change the view because we're not necessarily demoing anything at the moment. So we've shown uh, shown how this does stand by itself as its own keyboard or an organ type of keyboard compared to the others in the yc line compared to the montage modi x and compared to the cps and we've talked about the weighted action and how that's important to it we've talked about the keys section the effects processing we've talked about um controlling the filter sweeps and all these different parameters and that it's this updatable OS. Uh, but there is something I think is worth mentioning because 
if someone were to be interested in getting this keyboard, I what are you guys? We always have promos going on all the time, and I just want to know if someone were to get a YC73 or an 88, do you guys have anything special going on either with us or in general as far as these keyboards are concerned? Well, we have the early adopter promo is um, where you get a pedal. If you um, sign up for the early adopter promo, we'll send you, um, uh, I believe, an FC7 pedal, which is a very useful thing to have. Inside the box with the YC73 and YC88, you already get the um, FC3A pedal, but um, if, you, uh, if, you, you, if you go to our, our website, Early Adopter Program, um, we'll make sure that link is in the chat here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll even pull it yeah. up. But um, um, what's you great... You get an I... FC7 and an FC5 both. So the FC5 is this little guy down here. It's just a little foot switch. That's a great, useful thing, especially for turning on and off your... Uh, you can see it happening over there. Or I can assign it to anything on here that's a switch. I can turn on a section if I want. I can adjust an octave or something like that with this cool little... And then the FC7 is this pedal right here. If I can grab it here. Oh. Um, hold on. Don't want to muck up everything. It's... <laughs> It's kind of hard because it's, it, you can sort of see it. Ah, sorry, it's it's connected here. So, but the FC seven, you can definitely look at it online. So you can, I'm messing up my foot pedals. But get those for for um for the early adopter program. The direct link, we'll put it up in the chat here in a moment. Um, so you can get to it if you purchase a YC, um, series keyboard. So, there you go. So I am trying to submit it to the. There we go. It didn't look work at that. for something. Okay, Look at that. So we're good. There it is. Early adopter program. So Woo! take advantage, guys. And like he was, look, you want, you might as well. It costs nothing to be part of the early adopter program. It's just a benefit that if you get these keyboards, you'll get to do exactly what uh, you, you, Blake, were just doing, where you having multiple pedals allows you to implement more effects more easily. Instead of doing the dialing type thing, yeah. you can. Just having go control right where I don't have to. I don't have to reach up and grab everything that I, you know, especially for the rotary speaker, that foot switch. Woo, that's a great one. Yeah, until have. until our genetics evolve where we have more fingers, toes, hands, and legs, we're going to have to I'm do things on. like this. Yeah. So, hey, look, you guys are making it easy. So this is, it's awesome. So we've got an early adopter program. Uh, we've also got, um, we've got these keyboards in stock at Sam Ash. Again, I'll just make note of that uh by doing this just in case people didn't know and i'm also going to in case people i forgive me i'm not oh, oh well that's the link i meant to just show it on samash.com so let's green share so you can see that we've got it in stock online so i'm not bluffing you guys can go oh wow ben's really serious about this so here it is coming up just a little patience everybody there it is boom oh there you go there you go so i always do this and this is the like uh this is the part ben's boring about but yeah you got the yc88 and i'm also going to share the link so if you want to if you're looking at this and you're like okay i gotta get that right now there's the link i hope yep it seems to have been sent to everybody all right so let's discuss big price tag understood but honestly what we said first of all the feature sets alone are bonkers. So those alone should be worth the price of admission. But you're also getting, let's scroll down. You got the foot pedal, the FC3A, and you get a power supply, and you got an owner's manual, but that's always a given. But we should also mention, look, this is a this will not be a keyboard that gets obsolete. So don't think you're spending $3,000 and it only lasts you three years. No, this is a keyboard that could last you your life where you'll be using this for 20 years and it'll pay for itself. And if you're still like, look, times are tough, but I really want this keyboard. We do have the Sam Ash music financing plan. So you just get a Sam Ash credit card and it's only $84 a month for 36 months. I hate doing the salesman pitch, but I, 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 if I can help our customers get the gear they want as easily as possible, I'll do whatever it takes. 
but if you have more questions, if you have more uh, concerns, God forbid, but if you have anything you want to ask about this, first of all, you can always go right to the source. Just contact Yamaha on their socials. You search Yamaha Music USA on Instagram, on Twitter. You search Yamaha Music USA on Facebook. You're bound to find them. You're, ba you're bound to get someone to respond to you. If you're looking for more of a sales-oriented question, like, I, I want to get this keyboard. Are there speakers that would go well with it? Do you have a stand that would go well with it, etc.? We're here to help at samash.com. You can call us. You can go to your local store. You can... Um, you can also just simply just shop online and we have if you go up to the top you can do a live chat right here at the very top of the page i don't know if you can see that on your screen it's the big red button and you can text someone if you're that kind of social anxiety type that doesn't like to talk on phones we get it we can do that as well so we got them they're in stock we've got warranties so in case anything happens you're covered but um i should also mention that and let's put it back into this mode okay we'll do it like that or boom um, oh, nice. if you want to come shop at Sam Ash Music, by all means, we'd love to see you, but we do want to mention that we are practicing, uh, as much sterilization and hygiene in the stores as possible to keep them as clean as possible. We are all wearing masks. We insist you wear a mask in the store. We cannot allow you in our store. There is no argument. There is no compromise. You need to wear your mask like this over the nose and mouth. I don't know how many times to explain it but please come into the store with a mask we don't want problems either we don't want our associates getting sick we don't want our customers sick and most importantly we don't want you to get sick either and so there's that we are sterilizing all of our gear before and after it is played with we are practicing six feet of safe distance from all customers and associates and uh all that being said if you want to come in great if not we also have curbside assistance and you can buy this stuff online but if you can come in and play it, and we're not forcing you, you'll understand everything Blake has mentioned about how it feels, how it plays, how easy it is it is to use. And I feel like I'm going to repeat myself, but yeah, it's a great keyboard. I, well, I don't know have what? to tell you. Uh, another thing, just, just to point this out, we also have YamahaSynth.com. We have forums at YamahaSynth.com. Oh, you can post in the right. forum. You know what? I'm even cool with... I'm on Facebook. I accept lots of people who are just... Um, customers to ask me questions on Facebook. I answer lots of questions on my own personal Facebook channel. Blake so, also has an I OnlyFans mean, account. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, not this. No, not no. yet. Yamaha pays him well um, enough. He doesn't but, need an OnlyFans. But but I, I you know I, <laughs> I, I I talk to people all the time um, about just you know and and I try to be as you know obviously yeah I work for Yamaha so I have some bias there. But I also really, truly believe in this company. I've been with this company for over 20 years. So um, it, I am a, a very solidly, you know, love the company and the products that we make and the, um, you know, and the, the, the engineers and all the people there. It's just filled with lots of passion at this company. It's a great place. It's a great place to work. Um, and you can always talk to me about any questions that you have about our product, and I'll try to explain it as straight up, honest, and straightforward as I possibly can with you about these instruments um, anytime. Please. And speaking of That's which, I'm here. if you haven't seen our other live streams, I'll, in case you're just coming in or you just joined us a little while ago, we have other live streams we've done with Blake on our Facebook and on our YouTube, and we even have some content from him on our IGTV as well. Just search Yamaha, wherever there's a search bar in any of those sites, under if you go to Sam Match and yep. you look for videos, or if you go to YouTube or Instagram, you can find all these videos. Yamaha is a great partner with us. We love supporting the brand. They have fantastic products. We love doing these live streams with them when we hope to do more, of course. And we hope most Absolutely. of all that you, the customer, is enjoying this. Because it's one th look, Blake and I could do this without an audience, but That's it right, definitely yeah. serves us both to have someone to talk to. So we want to say thank you, first of all, for tuning in, asking your wonderful questions, and giving your wonderful compliments to Blake as well. Uh, we hope you learned something about these keyboards. We hope, uh, and if you didn't learn everything you needed to know or still have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either Sam Ash Music or Yamaha. Um, I guess I'll sign off in a sense by saying, 
We hope if you are a Sam Ash customer, you continue to shop with us. And if you aren't already, we hope you become a Sam Ash customer and hope you enjoyed this show. And we hope you tune in for our next live stream, whether with or without Yamaha, on behalf of Sam Ash Music. Uh, I want to thank Blake. Hey, ben, how long has Sam Ash been in business anyway? Almost 100 years. We started in 1924. So we're coming up real quick. We've got three more years till we celebrate. So 97 years we've and, been in And what's your last name again? Oh, it just happens to be Ash. Go figure. Oh, what? That's, that's, that's interesting. Wait a minute. <laughs> interesting and not coincidental at all. Are you related all, see? to the original yeah. Sam Ash? Yeah, yeah, right there. I'm fourth generation, so Sam you Ash the, is you're the great... my great-grandfather. Then it was Jerry Ash. Then it was right. Sammy Ash. And then it's me. And there's not a fifth generation yet. No plans at the moment. <laughs> okay. So if anyone was assuming is there going to be a sequel, we'll have to wait and see. Um, see, that says, but... that says so much right there. You want to talk about family-owned businesses? Sam Ash. Yeah, there there's go. not a lot of them. The, the only one I can truly like think of Very cool. that we're friends with, and I'll give them a shout-out because they are one of our friends, is uh, Washington Music Center. If you're ever in the D.C. area, shout-out to those guys. Adam is literally and figuratively running a great show there because he does some great live streams himself uh they've got great gear we love those guys uh we don't have a store in dc that's why i have no problem promoting them <laughs> so go. uh definitely shout out to adam levin and the levins and chuck levin's washington music center um so definitely give them i i feel like i should always shout out my friends when i can uh sure. but they're the only Absolutely. other family business i know and we're very proud to be associated with them uh, at least in America, as far as music stores are concerned. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the comments, or I'm going to get an email later being like, you forgot this family business. And for that, I truly am sorry. <laughs> you can't I'm here. I, this industry it's, it's is all about learning. Yeah. yeah, it's all about learning. We're, we can't be perfect all the time. So, um, on that note, thank you guys very much. Blake, do you have anything else before you, I guess, play us off? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I'll play it off, I'll pl I'll play it off with the C7. All right, so on that note, literally and figuratively, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Blake playing us off, and we hope to see you next time. Take care, and Blake, thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Thanks.